Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Barbara. I'm a compulsive eater, bulimic. I weigh and measure three meals a day, and I turn it over to my sponsor. And I don't eat no matter what. Absence is absolutely the most important thing. I don't put the food in my mouth. I keep my hand away. And I keep it basic and gray sheet, the food, the food, the food. Um, and I'm so grateful. My abstinent date is May 14, 2015. So I'll be coming back. It'll be nine years. And I'll just quickly say that was from prior to that. I was 12 and a half years abstinent um, and sober and clean. And I picked up. I didn't pick up the food, but I picked up a drug and I never told anybody. And because I couldn't face up because of that ego, I left. And thank God I was only out for a year because everything that I had gotten from program, the second you go out and pick up, you leave off. I was back in the food. I was back in binging and purging. I was back drinking and drugging. And it was severe. Because when I eat, I drink and drug. That's my story. There isn't enough of anything. Um, and by grace, I came back. Grace for me comes from utter, utter defeat and pain. And I came back. And I had to get fess up. And it's about telling the truth. So for me, telling the truth really began at 4.0. Because I never learned how to tell the truth. Because I learned how to lie, hide. I picked up the food at five. I got stunted. And then all those traits that were underneath People, places, and things, fear, doubt, insecurity, egomaniac, low self-esteem, people pleaser, hiding, never telling anybody there was anything wrong. And I did that most of my life and made most of my life decisions based on fear and wanting to be saved. Um, and that's all the underlying stuff, but I'm here about the food. This is an awesome food plan. I come from Cambridge Gray Sheet. I am so grateful that the only thing I had to do was put the food down, go to meetings and make phone calls. I did not have to do anything with the steps. Mind you, I had been coming out of the rooms of AA. And I was just told, focus on your food, shopping, shopping, make phone calls and you never put your number out and said, call me. I had to call people. I didn't know what the hell to say. I needed basic stuff. And that's all I got. It's the food, the food, the food. And I have to say years later, because I'm finally able to say in my skin, I am an atheist. I have never believed in a God. I go to a non-theist meeting, which is beautiful. I believe that a group of drugs, good orderly direction. I believe in you guys and I believe in this food plan. And um, the 12 steps, you take them any way you take them. That's where I have my belief for today. Um, anybody, higher power, whatever, for me, it's about higher self. It's about being able to look inside of myself to see the truth. And I could never do that. And it took many, many years of keeping the food down to be able to see what was really going on because I wasn't ready. And you're ready when you're ready. But I ingratiate, for me, I find where I fit in this program as far as how I do my service, how I do my life in gray sheet. Because I used to do things out of people pleasing and half the time I'm like, what the F am I doing? I'm being recorded so I can't swear. So what I've learned is I'm here to just talk about the food. Um, I'm not here to save anybody. I'm not here to make shame anybody. 
I think the most important thing that I've learned in Gray Sheet for me is I have to learn to be kind and gentle to myself. Because if I'm not, I may act like I'm kind and gentle to you, but I don't feel like that inside. Um, and what does that have to do with the food? Everything. I submerge myself in this program. For me, I get my recovery on Zoom. If I ever go on a phone meeting, it's because I'm cooking, shopping, chopping. I'm doing other things. But paying attention on a Zoom meeting um, is where I get eye contact. I'm a very visual person. Um, I was on a meeting, not in great sheet, but on another meeting where the speaker said, the majority of the people in this meeting are looking down. And they said, that is like, you might as well not be here. And, and anyway, and it's not saying, because we all do stuff differently here. And I personally, like, I'm off video when I can be off video, because sometimes I'm eating my meal and I really want to connect. So this is the beauty of this program. We get to choose meetings we're comfortable at. Some people need to be on video and that's the rules. It doesn't make a difference. Like my food is between my sponsor and I. I learn my service in my home groups or I do Watertown. Um, I love sponsoring people. So, uh, you know, that's what I'm good at. I am not good at computer stuff. I'm very basic. I'm not a, a business person, but I do my business and where I feel comfortable. And what does that have to do with the food? Everything. Because I was a very sick person. Um, my family of origin, I'm a, I was middle upper class Jewish girl in Long Island. I thought I came from a good family. My family was wackadoodle. I had a rageaholic mother. Both of her brothers committed suicide. My twin sister committed, committed suicide, left two babies. My older sister is mentally ill. If she's not um, medicated, she's in a straitjacket. And, you know, that's mental illness. Well, guess what? Eating is a form of mental illness. So, I, you know, I had the food to cope until it didn't, it stopped working. So my survival skills have served me well until a certain point. So, you know, rageaholic, that was my first, you know, if anybody comes from a rageaholic household, you, it's so deep in your bones. And, um, and the beauty of gray sheet, for me, I need to be in the middle of the herd in gray sheet. I am no better than anybody else. This is about the newcomer. This is about welcoming people in. This is about, for myself, I came from a lot of shame, a lot of fear, a lot of everybody was smarter than I was. Because in my family, if you're brilliant, you kill yourself. And I was like, not the smart one, but I was street smart. But, you know, I wasn't, my mother was an Irish poet, scholar, you know, Jewish, Irish, po you know, Irish. So if I didn't understand every Irish writer and if I didn't understand Yeats, then I wasn't smart. But anyway, God bless her. Um, but what I want to say is when being in this program and being abstinent, um, I'm really able to slow down. I come from the end of flying and never move it, never stopping, just move, move, move. And you know, that's a form of distraction. You know, I could put the drugs down, I could put the food down and the booze down and money down, all that stuff. But I know how to escape from myself. And so my practicing is to, slowing down and breathing and and this is all done in between my meals um just like I'm 65 and I've never felt better in my life mentally emotionally and spiritually like you know I will say it's a luck of the drawer 
there's plenty of people in gray sheet who think they're going to be healthy their whole lives. That's not true. The gray sheet food plan makes me a better person, physically makes me feel better. But the rest is like, I don't know what could happen, you know, emotionally, mentally, or spiritually. I hope to God for today. Um, yeah, that's well, where I went. down, go. Barb. Ten thanks. Down. Thank, thanks, Nancy. I'm a slow learner. Um, and I swear to God, but the slogans, I love. I just keep it simple. I just love slogans. I, if I've worked hard on anything in 12 step that I can say that I am practicing better than I ever have is I keep it in the day. And when I can keep it in the day and really keep where I'm centered, this is not where I'm at. I don't go into projection. I go into real time. And when you're in real time, you can't be thinking other things because I have a head that wants to be distracted and wants to tell me a lot of bad things. So what do I do? I get centered. I breathe. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, I'm getting so centered. Last Sunday, I opened the trunk of my car and I closed it and whacked myself so bad that I saw myself fly. Well, anyway, I passed out. Um, so that's really being mindful. And I realized days later that I haven't been feeling well, but I have a concussion. So like, how do you do an hour of sitting and meditating and then go whack yourself? But the good news is I still love my food. Um, and I know I'm ending this is wrapping up. I love, love, love my food. I got Cambridge, eat the biggest and the best. Um, I get to delight. I am the happiest human being on the face of this earth when I'm eating my meals. And I do share a life with others, but I have my husband. I eat with my chopsticks. We watch Netflix because we don't, I don't want to talk to him, but, and I just eat. And I love it. And it's precious. Um, and I bring my abstinence everywhere. I, I have no pride. I like to go out. I eat out in restaurants. I have grandchildren who I love more than life itself. Um, my little four-year-old, she has a scale. So I'm teaching her math. And she BB weighs and measures her food. And like, I am, I am not shamed by this. I had to come out of the closet because if you're showing that scale, you can make up any story you want. This is who I am. Love me or, you know, I don't, I'm not around people that are looking in like making any declaration about my food because I choose to be around people who care, who are healthy. Um, and I just want to be a good person. I'm just another person. Bozo. I'm not better than, I'm not worse. I just, all my life, I just wanted to be in the middle and just kind of get regulated in the middle. So that's really all I have to say. What I'll end with is I love this program and I love the people in it. And everybody has their own time when they figure their stuff out. I, I just know that I'm just, you know, when asked, I'll give information. Other than that, I don't tell anybody what to do except how they weigh and measure their food the way I do it. So that's it, and I'll pass. Thank you.